Did you know that doctors often order the wrong C. difficile tests and they often misinterpret the test results? In this video, you'll discover three things to help you clear up your confusion around C. diff testing. First is why are the tests so confusing for patients and doctors alike? Second, I'll cover the different tests available and the pros and cons of each test. And lastly, you'll discover the gold standard test, which test actually verifies if you have an active C. diff infection. I totally understand why you might be confused and frustrated about your C. diff testing results. Heck, I'm a microbiologist and I spent hours looking through the tests, the interpretations. It's not easy and it's not very straightforward at all. But there are two main reasons for the confusion in the whole testing arena. First is that there's no one perfect test for C. diff that is 100% accurate. It just does not exist. Second, there's many C. diff tests. They work in different ways and there's a lack of agreement between doctors on the best testing and the best methodology. The IDSA is an organization that sets all the guidelines up for how to do C. diff testing and which methods to do. Even they are not in agreement to, uh, as to which are the best C. diff testing methods. And I have a quote here from the American Society for Microbiology. They said that due to the multitude of tests and the many combinations of tests, this has led to significant confusion regarding interpretation, and importantly, how to distinguish between colonization of C. diff and a, a true infection with C. difficile. So because of all of this a significant confusion on which tests to use and how to interpret the results, if you saw a bunch of different doctors, there's a good chance you would get many different diagnoses when it comes to C. difficile infections. And unfortunately, because of that, many doctors will actually prescribe antibiotics based on test results that don't even show you have an active infection. So to understand C. difficile testing, you first actually need to understand how C. diff bacteria make you sick. So when C. diff bacteria are actively growing inside of your large intestine, that means they're not held in check by your protective or good bacteria. They actually can produce toxins. And when they make these toxins, that's what's considered a C. difficile infection. The C. diff toxins, they're very poisonous. They irritate your colon. And those toxins are what make you sick. They cause the diarrhea, they cause the abdominal pain, and all the other various symptoms that come along with C. difficile. However, with C. diff testing, there's also tests for the presence of the C. diff bacteria, and it's important for you to know, some people are actually colonized or carriers of C. difficile and not have any symptoms. They might be an asymptomatic carrier or colonized. That just means the bacteria are there in the GI system, but they're not actively producing toxins. They're just there. They're held in check by the good gut bacteria. So that just means the C. diff bacteria can be inside of you, not active, not producing toxins. About 10% of the population are C. diff carriers. They're not sick. They're not infected. And chances are, if you've had C. diff before, you're probably also a carrier of the bacteria or the spores. They can be there for months or even years after a C. diff infection has cleared. The presence of those bacteria doesn't necessarily mean an active infection is in progress. So what's important is those toxins. If the C. diff bacteria are actively growing, they're producing the toxins. So you want to look for the presence of the toxins. So now that you know the difference between simply being colonized, having the presence of C. diff versus an actual infection that's producing toxins, there's two main categories of tests. The first actually just looks for the presence of C. difficile and the second actually tests for the presence of toxins. Now these first tests 
Uh, there's a GDH test and an NAAT test. Those two tests are looking for C. diff. Like, is it present in your stool sample? Are the bacteria there? Now, this is a pretty good, um, it's a quick test. It's a good screening test to see if it's even um, the, the cause of your symptoms. Is it C. diff? Is it not C. diff? Now keep in mind, this is only showing the presence of the bacteria, not if it's actually infecting your GI system. Now on your test report, you may see the initials GDH. If it's GDH positive, that simply means you have C. difficile bacteria present in your stool sample. You don't know yet if it's an actual infection. Now the second screening test is NAAT, and it actually looks for genetic material made by C. difficile bacteria. So it's also, again, just saying, is it there or not? Yes or no. You'll see it on your test report as NAAT. You also may see this test as toxin B gene or toxin A gene. It's important to note a toxin B gene test or a toxin a gene test is not a toxin test, hence the confusion around this test, and I'll talk a little bit more on that later. So if you are positive for NAAT or toxin B gene or toxin A gene, that simply means the bacteria are present and that C. diff strain could make C. diff toxins. It doesn't actually know if the toxins are being made. Here's one way that it might make it easier to think about this. The, um, just imagine a car in your driveway and it has the ability to make this really thick black smoke when you take it out for a drive. It's kind of like an old clunker car. So the, the GDH test and the NAAT test or the toxin gene test, if those are positive, that means you have a car sitting in your driveway the car has been identified, it's there. Now the NAAT or the toxin gene test, if that's positive, that means there's gas in that particular car. So it could actually run down the road and make black smoke because there's gas in the car. It's detected the presence of gas. But that last toxin test, the EIA toxin A plus B, that test actually says, no, that, that car is actively driving down the road. It's making all that toxic black smoke coming out of the back of the, the car. That car is making toxic black smoke. That's the active C. diff infection. So the presence of C. difficile toxins, that is actually key. That is the gold standard test. You want to make sure your doctor orders for you to make sure your infection is active and producing toxins. That again is the EIA, toxin A plus B or toxin B test. It can also be that cytotoxicity assay, the CCNA test. Now, even with these tests, as I mentioned initially, no test is 100% perfect. So even with these tests, uh, they can have false negatives. They're not as sensitive as we would like. Uh, they may not pick up low levels of toxins, and therefore they could be a negative, even if you do have low levels of uh, C. diff toxins. They also are a little longer to run. They're not a quick, rapid test. Um, sometimes you'll get a positive test showing that you have C. diff bacteria present, but you're still having negative symptoms and the toxin test, the EIA test will come back negative. Uh, if the infection symptoms are persisting, you can ask your doctor again to run another EIA toxin test. So of course you'll wanna be working with your doctor. If you have more severe symptoms for more than three days, your doctor may decide to go ahead and put you on antibiotics, uh, even with a negative EIA toxin test. If you're starting to feel better, uh, you may decide you wanna wait and kind of watch your symptoms if you're on the upward getting better trajectory. 
Uh, regardless, if you've had C. difficile infections before, they're really hard on the gut. Those toxins are very difficult. They're very irritating. They're very poisonous inside of the colon. And it takes a long time for the gut tissues to heal and also for the, the gut microbiome to normalize. And in that time, it's common to have IBS-like symptoms happening uh, as well. So just keep that in mind on your, your journey to getting better and recovering from C. difficile. So as you can see, C. difficile testing is very confusing. Unless your doctor is an expert in C. difficile, they could easily order the wrong tests or prescribe antibiotics just based on the presence of the bacteria or the C. diff toxin gene, neither of which prove that you have an active infection. So it's important to know that C. diff testing isn't the only piece of diagnosing a C. difficile infection. Your doctor will also wanna review your symptoms, your medical history, any risk factors you have, and importantly, uh, that would include recent antibiotic use within the last six to eight weeks. So as you've learned, it's the C. difficile toxins that make you sick, not just the presence of the bacteria themselves. The trouble is all the current conventional treatments like antibiotics and fecal transplants, they don't do anything to address those toxins. Even most of the natural remedies on the market, they may kill the C. diff bacteria, but they also don't address the toxins directly. So a great way you can actually feel better is to remove those offending C. difficile toxins from your GI system. So check out the video here, as it will show you how to get rid of those C. difficile toxins regardless of which treatments you choose to use.